regular meeting of the council uh, scheduled for Tuesday, May 5th at 6.30. We're running a little late. It is now in session. Uh, Madam Clerk, what you call it? Councilor King? Present. Councilor Baker? Present. Councilor Martin? Present. Councilor Wheeler? Here. Councilor Thomas? Here. Uh, Madam Chair, remarks of the public on agenda items only. <laughs> yeah, I don't see nothing on the agenda for it, but anyway, <coughs> I, I like to say this. It, here people are trying to help us, and I'm trying to fathom as to whether we are trying to help ourselves. And, uh, and I just listened a few minutes ago as to uh, uh, other municipalities had extended the courteous to us to utilize, and other people uh, utilize their uh, vehicles and things, paramedics, etc. And then uh, other entities to repair our uh, equipment. And I'm wondering, is it our automobiles? Are they repaired, or what the story is, and why do we have to continue to have uh, you utilize others. I understand the mutual aid as far as uh, fire and things of that nature. But we have two ambulances which have served this city when we had 30, 40, 50,000 people. And now you're saying that uh, two ambulances cannot serve this city. I realize we sit back and allow Green Road to leave, uh, tear down the facility, make sure we didn't have a hospital, or be able to. Uh, get someone else to come in to uh, to operate that building. So I, I just, it, it, I cannot fathom in my finite mind as to what we are doing, if people are trying to help us, are we trying to do anything to come out, out from under the auspices of what we are laboring under because we have financial challenges? What are we doing besides lips and flat? Here's somebody here trying to even get a flag for us. And, and we um, can't even buy a flag. That's crazy. Mr. O'Hayes, you may have just said. The rope too small. Is there anyone else that would like to uh, speak on agenda items only? Who? No. Anyone else like to speak on agenda items only? Hearing none, uh, reports and announcement of the mayor. Who is speaking for the mayor at this particular time? Are you his uh, designee? I am Willa Hammond's law director, speaking on behalf of the mayor, Gary okay. Norton. Right. I uh, want to thank the um, giver of the flag. We do have flags in the building. It's just that the pulling mechanism is broken and uh, we're planning to have it repaired uh, by the end of the week, but we still thank and uh, receive with gratitude the flag. Thank you, Madam Chief, Madam Law Director. Uh, reports and counsel. Not even your business. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm looking at it. My eyes. Let me put my glasses on. Your business now presents Staff Sergeant Elizabeth Perez, United States Marine Corps. Please come to the front. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As a member of the Lake County Marine Veterans Honor Guard, I present you Los with these Angeles. national colors for the city of East Cleveland to fly at City Hall. The city of East Cleveland uh, takes great pride in accepting this flag from an individual like yourself. We are proud to accept this flag, even though there are other flags maybe in building. This flag from you is super special, and it's super special 
because it was given to us by you. We here at East Cleveland know the uh, plight of your journey, and it is similar <coughs> to the plight of the journey of East Cleveland. We have a lot of controversy. We have a lot of things going on in East Cleveland. But this flag represents freedom. It's come with blood, sweat, tears, and death. Someone asked me today when in a, um, a uh, media, what does this flag mean to me? And have we thought about buying one? There is no way on God's green earth that you can purchase a flag. It has to be given, and it has to be given with honor and serenity and peace. We would not go out and buy a flag. You cannot buy all the things that has happened to those veterans that gave their lives for their country. Can you put a, a dollar sign on that flag? And it is with great honor that this council accepts this flag, regardless of how many other flags is floating around. Because this flag is special, and it comes from an extraordinary person, not doing an ordinary thing, but doing a special, extraordinary thing. East Cleveland, honor is honor to accept this flag. And we hope that you, on your journey, wherever you go, that you are welcome back here in East Cleveland, not just for the flag, but for everything that you represent and who you represent. I thank you. Thank you. Yes, I, I uh, so Madam Chairman, yes. I just wanted to see if I got this right. Uh, Thank you, sir. Yesterday, Sergeant, I saw a group of people walking down this Euclid Avenue Route 20 in yellow T-shirts, and I think it said Hola. Is what Hola, that, sir. Hola, Hola, which means hello. It what? reads hello, but it stood for a Hispanic <coughs> organized in Lake and Ashtabula, but we've grown so far. It's not Lake and Ashtabula anymore. Okay. It's Northeast Ohio. Well, we welcome you. Thank you for considering us. And I've looked at your credentials, which are impressive. And thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I would definitely like to thank you for the presentation of the flag. Uh, we, we're definitely grateful for your service. Um, I'm sure the residents of East Cleveland are very, very, very uh, grateful for your service to the United States uh, Marine Corps. I also like to acknowledge Ms. Veronica Dalbert, if I say that correctly, um, who is the executive director of the uh, Spanish organization. Um, if you like to come up and address as well. Uh, but we, we, we love the fact that they. We, I, I love the fact that she's uh, joined with you and your fight for uh, the return of your, uh, your spouse uh, to the United States. It's an unfortunate situation that has happened that led to the deportation of her husband. Um, and, and an organization has chosen to partner with, with you, uh, Sergeant, as a, as a means to help and aid in your efforts. I, as an individual and a, and a citizen of the United States, do support your efforts in regaining your husband's uh, citizenship to the United States. Thank you, sir. One more thing. What is a veteran? A veteran, whether active duty, discharged, retired, or reserved, is someone who at one point in his or her life wrote a blank check made payable to the United States of America for an amount of up to and including his or her life. This is honor, and there are, there are way too many people in this country today who no longer understand that fact, but we do. On behalf of the mayor, we want to thank you again, and we want to show our great appreciation by doing everything we can to keep the city on mission as part of the state of Ohio and as part of the United States of America so that your efforts will not be in vain. And happy Cinco de Mayo. Okay. Thank you, ma'am.
I have one more thing to say. On behalf of this council, you are welcome back here anytime. And you have our support anytime you need it. Just call on us from East Cleveland. We're a small, but we're mighty. I just have to say I'm very proud to be here today. Yesterday we walked from Manor Mall in Manor. We went to Wick Manor, Wicklid, Euclid, East Cleveland, we University Circle. That's a long way. And uh, we got the most support when we walked through East Cleveland. Yeah. Yeah. questions they were supportive of us it was different in each different area that we were the only one person I carried the national colors in the front only one person stopped and put their uh, hat over their heart and it was a gentleman at a store on a corner in East Cleveland and he came up and did that he's the one person we walked for nine hours yesterday nine hours one person from here I was so, I'm so proud to be here today. I'm very grateful for the residents of this city, for what they've done. I live up on Noble Monticello in Cleveland Heights, and uh, I'm so just completely proud and thankful for all the support that we got yesterday walking through this town. Thank you to each and every single one of you. Thank you. Hold on. Hold on. I got a young man back there. His name is Mr. Wall. Mr. Wall, would you stand here? Yeah. Mr. Council. Wall has just um, formulated uh, a group of veterans. Mr. Wall, could you tell us what the veterans uh, knew? Um, well, in the first place, the veteran donated a set of flags okay. to the city of East Cleveland. Okay. Yes. That included the city flag, the American flag, and the state flag, and an MIA flag. Yeah. We are having our second annual Veterans Appreciation Day picnic, May 30th or Memorial Day weekend. What is the group? Tell them what the group is just for me. U.S. Veterans of Ohio. Okay. So, yeah, and they're located there in East Cleveland? Well, yeah. Okay. I just want them to know that we've got a new group here that just got together, and there's about, what, 30 or 40 of them already? We're growing. <laughs> yeah, we're right. growing. <laughs> well, I just wanted to recognize that group and let her know that we got, we're got growing, too, and you all are probably on her side, too. Well, when she get out of the war, are you in a war zone? What, Senator? Are you in a war zone? I am not active duty Marine Corps anymore. I'm a Marine veteran. Yeah. 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 She's an old Marine veteran. Okay, thank you, Mr. Wall. And thank you so much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. here, too. Thank you so much for having us today. And the gift of the flag was really just a gesture of friendship and goodwill because of the feelings that we had coming through here. Like Elizabeth said, everybody was waving, coming out, of the, asking us questions. And um, and um, that's why we're here. So um, thank you so much for this warm reception today and allowing us to be here. And happy St. Germain. Hi. 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 Okay, uh, is there anything else that needs to be said by this council? All right, moving right along. Next is your reports on council committees. Reports of council committees, um, starting with uh, Councilman King. No, thank you, Council President. Uh, before I say that, Mr. Uh, um, uh, Councilman Nathaniel Martin had to leave, and he is uh, leaving now. <laughs> okay, um, Councilman King. Thank you. Okay. My committee has uh, not met since our last meeting. However, at the last meeting, I did announce that the food pantry that we've been doing now for a number of years 
first Fridays across from Popeyes, three to five, first Fridays of the month. We just started, so our first one was last Friday. And a number of uh, good vegetables and fruits, and we are able to get rid of all the food. So again, that's the first Friday of every month. We go through September, three to five, across the street from Popeyes, a small building called the Solar Building. So, and, and that's my, that's my report. Oh, also, we are uh, currently uh, still looking to, to move the research from the Case Western Reserve students and the Walsh University students forward, and we should be interviewing someone this week to bring them in uh, part-time to help us get this legislation in order and then pass the legislation and start enforcing it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilman King. Councilman Mansell Baker. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I have a brief report. The Contracts and Property uh, Committee uh, did have a meeting a while back, but we have an upcoming meeting set for the uh, 14th at 6 o'clock p.m. here to uh, discuss uh, the Dan Ray uh, legislation. Um, that's at 1650 Eddie Road, um, Resolution 30-15. is discussing um, a, an expansion um, of, of their property, their current property, and we have to definitely uh, explore what cost does that incur to the city of East Cleveland, um, or revenue for that matter, uh, so that we are definitely uh, in accordance with uh, the lease agreement. Uh, so you don't want to miss that meeting if you want to have input on that transfer station um, discussion. Uh, that's on, the, uh, on May 14th at 6 o'clock p.m. Um, outside of that, I will have my monthly ward meeting. That time is uh, to be determined, um, but I want to meet within the next two weeks and uh, notices will be going out to the residents. And feel free to call the uh, council office. She'll be notified as to the time, date, and location. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilman. Um, and now, uh, Councilman Vice President uh, Thomas Wheeler. Thank you, Council President. Um, some of you all are aware that we just had our committee meeting prior to start council meeting. Uh, a lot of information was discussed and shared with us from the uh, mayor and from the fire chief. And at the next council meeting, I'll have a copy of the minutes and kind of give you more detail. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Wheeler. Again, I want to say thank you to you got something to say? I, there was something important I forgot to mention. Well, don't forget nothing. How you did your day. Come on. Okay. I'm Thank sorry, you. I apologize for this. Um, however, I didn't want to leave without asking, um, since you want to help, Elizabeth, and the whole reason for the march was because we have not been able to get any help for her case. For five long years, she's been separated from her husband, who was deported in 2010. Her, she had a four or five month old at the time, their first son, and they were pregnant with their second son. And she needs her family to be together. And um, the government, our elected officials, it just seems like we keep hitting closed doors everywhere. And I think it would be helpful if we could get a resolution or a letter from the city council in support of Elizabeth's case. And we're gonna go to Washington DC next week and we can bring it with us. And we could give it to our senators and our members of Congress a copy of it, saying that the city of East Cleveland uh, supports uh, the reunification of her family as a Marine veteran who served 10 years in our country, that she deserves that they cut through the bureaucratic tape and reunite her family. Uh, we have tried so many different things. That walk was supposed to be our game changer. And I believe everything happens for a reason. Maybe God put us here so that we did the walk and look at where we are today. And so we're hoping that you can help us uh, with the resolution. Thank you for your time. And I can help you write it as well if you'd like. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we will take that into consideration, talk to our law director, and get back to you as soon as possible. Okay. Thank you. Um, I guess it's time for my remark as the council president and the um, chair of finance.
Tanya. Uh, we attended uh, they had the commission meeting and it was as on April 22nd and uh, as of that time the um, commission I sit on that commission had not received the recovery plan. The chair of the commission had indicated that she wanted the recovery plan at this particular meeting. Also, she indicated that if she did not have that, she was considering bringing a resolution to the floor. And there was no um, recovery plan. So there was a resolution pertaining to the um, where as for the recovery. And the resolution was 2015-01, Financial Planning and Supervision Commission for the City of East Cleveland to inform the city of East Cleveland of the failure of financial recovery plan submitted on May 16, 2014 to achieve fiscal solvency and to request the city of East Cleveland to submit a submitted, a amended financial recovery plan. It goes back to when we first started, there was supposed to be a uh, financial recovery plan. Um, we had been in financial emergency prior for 18 long years. Then we came out and then we went back into financial emergency. Um, at this point, we're still waiting for the administration to um, submit a financial recovery plan. Now, the the, re the financial recovery plan is an administrative duty. Once that plan has been put in place, then the council uh, looks at it and either approves it or turns it down and whatever. At this point, this as of today, or as of this resolution, we have not received a financial recovery plan. There has been um, quite a few of our residents that has been wondering why the council has not come forward, even though the mayor has been doing his bidding throughout the city for annexing of East Cleveland into Cleveland. Well, if you don't have nothing substantial to say, don't say anything. Don't be just working your mouth and nothing comes out, especially if it's nothing constructive. So what the council did, the council went forward and engaged the firm of Buckley and King, which is a highly respected law firm. We engaged this firm, we sat down and we talked uh, and we did some training and we did some investigations and we had some education through this firm. And after doing all of this, we come out engaging the help of Buckley and King. And the most interesting thing about this is that it's pro bono. No money is involved. Buckley and King are going out for resources, studies, to see exactly what the other options are that are out there for East Cleveland except merger. 
No one has looked at all the other options. All has been expressed out there is the fact that we need to merge with Cleveland. And the council feels that we have to look at all our options before <laughs> we determine what is best for our city and our residents. Therefore, engaging Buckley and King is what we felt was most important. And they have the expertise, they have uh, the staffing to deal with each and every study that's out there. And most of all, they have the resource to go out and get the financial aid that we need. Before, we have not had that. We engaged in a lawyer to do some things for us. But at this point, we have education on our side. We have expertise for us that counsel us and tell us what is going to happen step by step. It is imperative that we, this council, do as much education ourselves as we can so that when we go out, we can talk it and back it up with facts, with um, information that has been gathered throughout for all the studies, from all the studies. The mayor has been talking out there, but he has not told us of any resources, anything that will be accomplished by merging or annexing, which is the same thing, with the city of Cleveland. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to say that it was unanimous through all of the council people, all five, that we engage with Buckley and King, meaning that there are no cans to our learned <laughs> counselor King. You know, well, unless and there's a different color going on here. Uh, but at this point, um, basically what we have is little money to work with. <coughs> We're not broke, but we have a little. And when you have none, you're broke. So we do have uh, a little. <laughs> and when uh, the resident was asking about why are we accepting donations and gifts from other areas, that's what you do. When you need help and someone offers you help, you don't say no. You say thank you and I'll return the favor at another time. When someone is sick and your neighbor comes over and they bring you a pot of soup, you say thank you. And if that neighbor is in help, need of help along the line, you hopefully will be able to return to that favor. So that is called sharing. And isn't that what America is all about? Amen. Okay? So, Having said all that, uh, my ward meeting was uh, the last Monday of the month, and it's always the last Monday of the month. I was glad to have um, uh, a crowd, and my counselors came to my meeting, and we had uh, we shared a lot of information. I don't feed them; I give them knowledge. Tell them to eat at home. <laughs> come to the meeting to get fed knowledge. And that's where I am today. <coughs> um, the next ward meeting will be on the last Monday of the month. I um, thank you. I appreciate everyone coming. And I appreciate all of my residents that shows up. And I Appreciate the cameraman, even though he's about to drop his camera. <laughs> uh, if there is, uh, let's see what I have to do now. Remarks. Remarks.
of the public. This is the best time of the evening. Three minutes only, thank you, Nancy. Well, I'm glad to hear that this is the best time of the evening. I'm Dr. Patricia Bohobiak. I live at 1894 Farmington. I have three things I want to say. First is that uh, last week the school board was informed that uh, Superintendent Corley would like to retire and be rehired. Because she wants to do this, there is a mandatory hearing which will be held on Monday, June 6th at 6 p.m. at Shaw High School. This is open to the public. Anybody who has thoughts on the matter is welcome at the meeting. Uh, second is that the mayor says that when uh, the merger that he wants takes place, when we are annexed, the schools may re remain independent. On WCPN a couple weeks ago, they announced that Mayor Jackson had said clearly, and I don't have this direct from Mayor Jackson, but it was on WCPN, that um, Mayor Jackson only wants the city of East Cleveland to be part of Cleveland if he can have the schools. So that's the second thing. Um, uh, three, I also attended Council President Barbara Thomas's meeting. And uh, one of the things that happened there was we received a list of buildings that the city has put onto the uh, demolition list. And um, this is with the county money. And I asked the city for a copy of the application. I asked Mr. Leach, but I have not received that yet. Um, I also attended the county meeting that they had uh, to discuss these demolitions and the use of the county money and uh, spoke with Mr. Paul Herdig, uh, who is part of that process. As I look at the list, there are houses that are not on that list that are bigger eyesores. There are houses that are not on that list that are more dangerous. If you look at the area uh, between Manhattan and Allegheny and Hayden in there, just that area, I think we could probably spend the $10 million on that area, and that would take care of more of the bigger eyesores that the city has than it would if they took down houses on Rosalind, Idlewood, Elvison, and Roxbury, which um, at this point in time is relative to some areas in the house um, more uh, more intact and more able to be rehabbed. It was stated at the meeting by Mr. Leach that some of the buildings were chosen because they would have to, because we couldn't <coughs> use other money to to tear down those houses. And I did confirm with Mr. Herdig that um, that there is a review process that would have to be uh, gone through if the houses on Rosalind, Idlewood, Elvison, and Roxbury were chosen. I say it. I'm sorry. I oppose. Thank you. <clears throat>